Good morning. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, coupled tropical extratropical interactions and the globally unstable mode. This is a continuation of uh, yesterday's talk. Yesterday I talked about uh, the uh, tropical extratropical interactions between NGO and NAO. Um, today I, I will talk more about uh, the uh, theoretical uh, work on, on this topic. So uh, first, I will uh, say a few words, outline uh, what are the existing MGO models in the uh, series about the, this uh, MGO generation. And uh, then I will spend uh, most of the time to talk about the three-dimensional instability theory of uh, intraseasonal oscillation and the convectively uh, coupled equatorial waves. And uh, then uh, I will show there are some com comparisons between uh, uh, observations and theory. All right, so uh, here is a list of historically proposed uh, theoretical models uh, for the MGO generation. Uh, these slides mainly uh, uh, for those theories that uh, look at the MGO as the mainly a tropical phenomenon. Uh, for example, at the first paper by Madden and Julian, um, 1971, they look at the, this um, uh, oscillation. They, they said uh, in the paper, it cannot be Kelvin wave. So it's, it's not Kelvin wave. Uh, it's different. But two years later, uh, 73, Parker, they say, oh, it's a Kelvin wave, because it's very similar, uh, wave number and uh, propagation. And uh, later, Linzen, uh, Lau and the Pen and the Chang and Lin, uh, to, uh, they, they uh, look at the theory for the uh, MGO theory, and uh, they, they said it's a Kelvin wave sustained through a, a wave, uh, and the, the uh, conditional instability of second kind, the CISK uh, mechanism. And uh, later, uh, Wang and Zui and uh, Saubi at all, uh, they, they modify that theory and they say it's a uh, Kelvin wave sustained through a frictional uh, wave uh, CISK mechanism. Uh, and um, Emmanuel and Lenin, they, they look at another mechanism and they, they say it's a Kelvin wave sustained through evaporation and the wind feedback. So it's uh, a little bit different from the wave CISK uh, mechanism. And from observation, and Wheeler, Kidadis, and then Nishi, they, they look at the spectrum, and they, they uh, look at the peak is uh, distinctively different from Kelvin wave. So they, they say it's not Kelvin wave. So there's a lot of uh, mixture uncertainty in the explanation of the MGO uh, phenomenon in the tropics. And um, uh, there's a question, what is the minimum uh, mechanism or processes that is responsible to produce the MGO in the tropics? And the work by um, um, Maida and uh, uh, Stachman, uh, they uh, designed a skeleton model. They, they look at very simple uh, what is the minimum to, to generate the, the, this process? Uh, they use uh, multiple uh, interactions between three uh, make it three processes. It's the dry dynamics and the lower troposphere moisture and the envelope of uh, uh, synoptic scale activities. So those multi-scale interactions, um, they show that uh, their model is able to, to generate some oscillations that is very similar to the MGO. So th those uh, just list of those uh, theories that is uh, focused mainly in the tropics, and they say it's a tropical phenomenon. And yesterday, uh, my talk and the Nick's talk, we, we show some uh, uh, influence from the extratropicals, extratropicals that can also be a possible mechanism to generate the initialized MGO in the tropics. And uh, another uh, kind of view for this uh, uh, 
isolation is is global view. You see, this is not only a tropical phenomenon. This is a global oscillation. It's a link it together, tropics and exotropics. So from the observation, and Mao and the Phillips and the Xu, and they uh, look at the uh, coherent uh, variation of the tropical wave and the middle latitude wave trends. So we link that together and they see that that is the uh, uh, global uh, phenomenon, uh, not only in the tropics. And the theoretical work by uh, Fred Bixon, and they uh, analyzed the instability of the global three-dimensional uh, basic state and the form uh, mode that is very similar to the NGO and the uh, interest in variability. So that is uh, the history of this uh, theory. So today, uh, my talk is uh, based mainly on these two papers. The first one is by Fredrickson, 2002, as the genesis of uh, interest in oscillation and the equatorial waves. And the second paper is by Fredrickson and myself. Uh, we compared the theoretical uh, waves with observations to, to see if there is uh, consistency between, uh, between theoretical work and uh, observational uh, work. All right, so um, uh, Fredrickson's um, uh, theory, uh, the look at the instability uh, of uh, interest in oscillation and the convective, convectively coupled equatorial waves. Uh, they, because it's a linear theory, so they uh, use a basic state uh, that is January to, uh, 1979. And there's some questions or why they don't use like a DGF mean and the multi-year uh, uh, multi-year average. And uh, I talked with him. He said uh, it's better to use uh, one single month because uh, uh, if you use a multi-year average, you uh, smooth out those features that is critical for this instability like that. And. Uh, the theory is instability. Uh, we you need ca include convection and e evaporation uh, in, in the model, and uh, they analyze the frequency, wave number frequency modes uh, uh, generated from this uh, eigenvalue eigenvector analysis, uh, and uh, we also compare with observation. Um, I will show the properties of a theoretical uh, interest in oscillation um, that is uh, broadly similar to the observed MGO. Uh, it is a coupled tropical, extratropical mode, sustained through mo moist boroclinic, barotropic instability. And uh, the property, if you, uh, I will show later, the, uh, the uh, wave number friction and the dispersion relationship uh, is uh, comparable with the uh, uh, coupled Kelvin wave, Rossby wave, mixed Rossby gravity wave, and uh, those waves uh, near the equator. So here is the basic state uh, for January 1979. Um, this is observation for 300 meter bosonal wind, 700 meter bosonal wind and uh, moist static stability. Uh, this is always positive. So that means uh, there's uh, no uh, mechanism to generate uh, wave uh, CISK uh, mechanism. So it's uh, uh, just to exclude this me mechanism. And uh, the, uh, this one is the uh, eva evaporation uh, and the zonal wind feedback. So th this is one of the important uh, term in, in that uh, equation. So the uh, evaporation wind feedback, uh, the parameterize that, that uh, uh, impact using this uh, equation. And the, uh, this is the coefficient and the, the uh, uh, thousand millibar density of the air. And this is the wind speed and at the near ground level. And uh, multiplied by the difference between the, uh, uh, the uh, saturated uh, specific humidity and the uh, 
uh, specific humidity at that uh, level uh, close to the graph. So they, they, they use the, this uh, parameterization to represent evaporation and the wind feedback. And uh, for the convection, they use a uh, simple, that's a generalized uh, cool type parameterization to represent the convection uh, in, in that uh, equation, uh, in that model. And they linearized uh, with respect to the uh, mean, um, January 1979 mean global field. It's a three-dimensional field. So this will produce a linear equation and they solve this eigenvalue, <coughs> eigenvector problem with uh, 2,480 by 2,480 uh, uh, big matrix uh, for the, the three-dimensional uh, basic state. And uh, then they, they find a bunch of modes, uh, unstable modes uh, from this system. And then they look at the uh, dispersion relationship, the frequency and the wave number. And um, okay, here is a list of the modes. Okay, they have a different uh, switch to switch off, for example, dissipation. So here include evaporation mechanism. Uh, here is the, another type of uh, experiment. The last column is the dry model. There, there's nothing. Okay, so uh, they have the first line that's for the, the called MGO. So what we can see is here is the mode number 66. And the, uh, the, uh, f the, the period of that oscillation is uh, 34.4 days. And uh, here is the e folding time scale. And they, they said this one is um, the most uh, closest uh, mode to, to the MGO. Uh, and also they, they got uh, uh, other uh, waves, like Kelvin wave, equatorial inertia gravity wave and uh, uh, mixture gra uh, Rossby gravity waves. So uh, here is the, uh, the uh, wave number frequency distribution for those uh, theoretically uh, generated mode. Uh, for example, okay, this line is a wave number from zero uh, in the center and the negative, that's the whistle propagation and uh, positive, that's easter word propagation. This is frequency. So uh, you, you, what you can see is that along this line, that's a Kelvin wave. That's uh, almost the uh, wave number and frequency, they are linear related. And the MGO, it's here, it's wave number one, and uh, it's different from, from the Kelvin wave. And they also have the equatorial Rossby wave on this side, and the mix, uh, uh, Rossby and ground wave and Elisha gravity waves. So they, they represent the, this uh, spectrum uh, dispersion relationship with this kind of uh, uh, diagram. And then compare with, uh, with the Wheeler Kinetics diagram. And uh, they, they, they say the comparison is good. All right, so uh, okay, what is this? Yeah, this? I think that's basically what I said. Okay, this is a comparison uh, with wheeler Kilades, um diagram for the observation. So this is the, the anti-symmetric part um, because in the analysis of Wheeler and the Kilades, they separate this mode, this analysis into anti-symmetric and the symmetric part. So the symmetric part, we have the Kelvin wave in this, at the uh, MGO in this area. Um, so that, that's why um, Wheeler and the Kinetics paper say this uh, MGO is uh, distinct, uh, it's different from the Kelvin waves. Uh, all right, so here is a comparison because uh, the, uh, in, in this paper, uh, in uh, Fredrickson's paper, he didn't, they didn't uh, separate to the uh, a symmetric and the anti-symmetric part. So they uh, include everything in this diagram. So this uh, light blue area corresponding to uh, to uh, wheeler Kladis diagram in this part. So that's uh, including the uh, uh, 
the, the, the initial gradual wave. But in this part, the white area is this part. So that means the Kelvin wave and the MGO and the equatorial Rossby wave, they compare uh, quite well with the observation. Uh, the theory compared with the observation. Okay, now uh, look at in detail the, the, uh, the MGO mode. And the, uh, we'll find the structure and the propagation and the compare, compare with the observation. Okay, now is the needing, this is the needing interest in the oscillation. And that's the MGO mode. Uh, the, the, this panel shows a 500 meter bar uh, stream function. Uh, what you can see is there's a lot of uh, um, like patterns, uh, anomaly patterns in the northern hemisphere. So that is, um, there, there's some similarity to what I showed yesterday from the observation. But the, this is a whole global theory generated. And the, 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 this diagram shows the uh, 300 millibar velocity potential. So that is uh, really a uh, tropical divergence field. So there is a connection between this kind of uh, northern hemisphere uh, pattern and the, the tropical uh, divergence. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the varies uh, with the period of 34.4. Uh, uh, That's uh, close to the, to the MGO time, time period. All right, this is a half molar diagram uh, for the uh, 300 meter bar velocity potential uh, from zero to 20 degree. I think the time goes up. This is the longitude you see the, the, the eastward propagation of the, the divergence field. And uh, compare with observation, uh, observation you see this, uh, um, this velocity potential, uh, this is a, a composite uh, from observations. So the, the, the propagation, there, there's similarities between the theory and the observation. Okay, uh, this is another comparison uh, with uh, the, uh, I think, stream function. Uh, okay, velocity, right? This, this is a zonal velocity uh, for the shading and uh, stream function. Uh, I think it's the same one, the last one. Yeah, it's the same one. Okay. All right, so now we compare the, uh, the analysis uh, between the, the theory and the observation. So we perform uh, analysis similar to uh, then 2009 and regard the time series of evolution of theoretical uh, ISO mode as very similar as observational time data set. And uh, to look at the uh, relationship between the phase of the convection in the tropics and the development of NAO pattern in the northern hemisphere. So instead of uh, using observational data, we use the model uh, output. And, uh, no, the model generated the evolution uh, to, to, to do the analysis. We also examine the extent to which the wave flux associated with the theory are similar to the observation. Okay, again, this shows the uh, wheeler Hendon index in the phase space. Uh, in, uh, from phase one to phase eight. Okay, this one I showed yesterday, and also this one I showed yesterday. This is a composite of uh, precipitation anomaly uh, along the equator for, from phase one to phase eight. Uh, so uh, now uh, we do the same composite, but uh, for the stream function uh, for 200 meter bar. Uh, so Again, you, you see this uh, with, uh, eastward propagation. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, phase one, you have divergence. This is upper divergence from the Indian Ocean that propagate eastward. Uh, that is uh, uh, consistent with this uh, precipitation anomaly, eastward propagation. Okay, this is an observation. But now, the uh, the same calculation uh, was done for the theory uh, generated the velocity potential for, for different uh, 
in the, in the cycle. Okay. So what you, you can see is that the uh, velocity potential from the theory for the MGO mode also propagate eastward. And uh, if you put them together, uh, you can find uh, uh, quite a lot of similarities. So that means that the, the, the theory uh, can, like uh, the, the mode uh, in the tropics uh, is very similar to the, to the MGO signal. Uh, we also did the UF analysis of this observation for the, for the LRR. Uh, I, it's very similar to what I showed yesterday uh, for the UF1. It's a monopole structure uh, near the uh, Indonesian continent, uh, uh, maritime continent area. And the second mode is a dipole structure. So uh, the, the, uh, the, the, this mode is uh, very similar. It's, uh, it's well correlated with the uh, Wheeler Hendon index, RM1 and RM2. And uh, you, you see the, uh, if you do a time mark relationship, you can see that uh, the UF1 lead UF2 by about 10 days. So, Okay, so we, we can do a velo velocity potential uh, regression uh, with respect to, to the PC1 and the PC2. So uh, instead of showing the relationship, this is the uh, OLR. This is, uh, so this is not surprising that the velocity potential uh, have this kind of larger scale features also. And uh, another thing is the uh, NO pattern. I, as uh, very similar to what I talked yesterday, uh, we project the uh, stream function, 500 meter bar uh, height. Uh, I think it's the stream function, uh, 300 meter bar, to this pattern to get to the NO uh, index. Uh, all right, so th this is the, the uh, evolution of uh, the uh, NO index for different uh, phase. But the phase in the theory is different. In the theory, it's a cycle. So you, you have to use the phase uh, from minus 80 degree to positive 80 degree. That can be mapped to the phase of the MGO uh, by looking at the, the location of the, of the convection of the stream function centers. So what this says is that uh, when there, there is uh, M, uh, okay, uh, I forgot a little bit. All right, so th this black curve is the NO index. Um, when there is uh, MGO, it's in phase uh, five, that, that's about uh, 10 days after phase three, you see a positive NO kind of uh, association in the, uh, in the middle latitude. So uh, this is uh, very consistent with what uh, we see in the observation. And uh, look at the, uh, the anomaly map. Uh, on the right-hand side, and that's the observation. Uh, on, the, uh, on the left side is the observation. Uh, on the, uh, okay, okay, sorry. The, the theoretical mode at the left side observational component at the right hand side. So the comparison is, um, for example, some like phase, uh, after phase three, uh, phase four, you see the, the uh, similarities, for example, the uh, development of the positive phase of NAO and uh, in phase five. So it's, uh, there's uh, some similarities between the theory and the observation. Okay, we also look at the uh, wave active flux, as I uh, showed yesterday, uh, from uh, Takaya and the Nakamura. And uh, here is the uh, theoretical mode, uh, wave activity flux for phase three, phase four, and phase five. So you see the, uh, the development of the wave flux activity in the North, uh, North Pacific and then extend to North America. And uh, another phase after, you see the southward propagation of the wave activity flux. 
that is very much consistent with the observation. So, uh, okay, yeah, this is uh, show the comparison in, in the same regions for, for, for the wave activity flux. So the, the theory matches quite well uh, with the observation. Uh, so, uh, okay, this is the second leading mode uh, for the uh, ISO oscillation. Uh, I think uh, the comparison, I think that this one I, I covered most of it. It's the, the trop extropical waves and the, the tropical divergence field. Uh, okay. So, and, uh, Another thing we look at is to, to see the sensitivity to the, to the basic state. Instead of using uh, 1979 uh, January uh, mean state, uh, we, we tried 1988 and the, the, also the average for, for, uh, from 1980 to 2009. So the, the, the second leading mode, the theoretical uh, ISO mode for the January 1979, a lot after uh, phase three by 20 days, and the period is uh, 44, 25 days. But with, with 1988 uh, basic state, uh, we also find the, the, leading, mo the, the leading mode, uh, it's uh, lag by 12 days. Uh, the, the time period is a bit shorter, uh, but it's still in the intra-season time scale. And if you use the 30 year average um, January basic state, uh, we, we find uh, the, the lag to phase three is about uh, uh, 12 days. The, the, the NO lags by 12 days. So the period is uh, about uh, 30, 38 days. So all, uh, there is some difference uh, among the, those uh, basic states, but all the, uh, they have the intra-season variability that has show the uh, tropical conviction and the association with the NIO. So the, the, those kind of results seems it's, uh, it's quite robust. Uh, so this uh, very clinic uh, zonal and the meridional wind for, for January uh, to, uh, 1988 and the comparison with uh, 1908 to 2009 you, you, you can see that, that there is uh, some, uh, some small difference, but mostly it's, it's, uh, it's very similar. I, by, by eye, I, I cannot see much difference. So I, I think uh, I, I will conclude. I just mainly cover this, this part, and uh, because <laughs> most of the theoretical work is done by uh, Fredrickson. So I, I just um, mainly uh, focus on the comparison with the observation. So the, the model ISO has uh, have a period of from 30 to 50 days uh, with the first internal mode, tropical structure, and the equivalent very tropical, uh, extra-tropical <laughs> structure. So the theory uh, captures the complex phase relationship between NGO connection and the NO, and also I didn't show the TNA uh, teleconnection. Uh, the tropical extropical interaction of th the theory I ISO seems uh, uh, seen uh, in wheel uh, flux uh, also are very similar to those in the observation. Uh, the second leading ISO mode for January 1979 has a period of 44 days. Uh, and uh, I think that's the best uh, structure uh, simulated. Uh, but uh, with different uh, basic state, um, we, we can still simulate, but with uh, a bit uh, different uh, like period, and uh, and the the growth rate is a bit different. All right, thank you. <laughs>